Good afternoon, Pastor David. Hey, John. Welcome, everybody, to a random moment unfiltered with Pastor David. You know, Pastor, we had our Israel meeting this last Sunday, and Bill was here. And, and as he was going over the itinerary, I was thinking about the different places that we visited. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite places that we go to is Caesarea Philippi. And what makes it more special for me is the devotion that you give or the teaching that you gave there. And you asked a question and you prefaced it by asking, by saying, this is the most important question in mankind. Pastor, what was that question? Yeah, it's uh, in Caesarea Philippi. It is a, uh, a location where uh, Jesus would take his men to uh, actually have a vacation or a time of recreation. Because Caesarea Philippi at that time was kind of like a resort place. It was a resort area. And so Jesus took his men there. And as he did so, he was taking his men to give them a place of relaxation and recuperation because they're so busy in ministry. And so not only did Jesus go to Caesarea Philippi, but others would go there. It actually had um, a, an established town, um, a resort, because uh, in that area, it was cool. It's there by Mount Hermon. And um, it's just a real relaxing area. And uh, it has a, a, uh, a cave that is there that water will come out from and, and, and it's been there for, for many centuries and all and it has become one of the uh, main sources of the Jordan River. There are actually three sources that converge into the single that make the Jordan and this is one of those locations. And so it's just a beautiful place. And so Jesus is there with his, his men and uh, he asks them that most important question. And I, I love to go to this place for this reason it's because that is the most important question that can be asked of anybody. And that question that he asked is, who do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And so that's the question every person has to answer. Uh, just this week, I had somebody who's been posting on Facebook and, and actually wanting to argue with me concerning who Jesus Christ is and all. and. And this person needs to answer that question because she thinks that, uh, that Jesus is just a, a manifestation of God, um, but does not see him for who he actually is, the um, second person of the Trinity. And so I've written to her in response uh, on a couple of occasions already because she's missing the answer. The answer she's giving is the incorrect one. And so she needs to know the true answer to the question as the Bible teaches, that he is God in the flesh. And so when Jesus asked the question of his men, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? He's already supplying the answer to them by saying the son of man. The son of man is a um, messianic title found in Daniel chapter 7, verse 13, in reference to Messiah as the son of man. And so he supplied the answer. It's one of those open book tests that you used to have on occasion in school. Well, the reason he's asking that is because his men, being men, are being influenced by the chatter that is uh, already uh, taking place related to, to Jesus, his mission, and his personhood. You know, Herod uh, believed that Jesus was uh, John the Baptist resurrected. After, and he says it, he says, this is none other than John, whom I have beheaded. There were others who thought of Jesus as being a prophet or even Jeremiah. And, um, you know, so they had various ideas. And again, the church over the centuries has been influenced by man's um, opinions of who Christ is. And we do, get, we do get influenced by what others say. And so Jesus wants to clarify their confusion. And so... The most important question is who he is. Who do men say that I am is the first question. Oh, some say John, Jeremiah, Elijah, one of the prophets, they supply these answers. But then he goes on and personalizes it by saying, but who do you say that I am? 
See, so it's not enough that I can repeat what others have said or have even been influenced by what others have said. It's who I personally consider him to be. And that's when the Apostle Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And blessed are you, Simon, by Jonah, flesh and blood has not revealed this unto you, but my Father in heaven. This um, information that you just supplied, this belief that you just confessed to is a supernatural kind of an awareness that the Spirit of God, my Father's Spirit, has made you uh, aware of. It isn't something that you, through your great studies or even walking with me, but it's the fact that, that God has revealed this to you. And that's what we talk about while we're there because it takes God to awaken us to who Jesus Christ is. And the Spirit of God draws us to that awareness through the conviction of the Spirit. And so I guess the biggest question, and I don't guess, I should say it like this, the biggest question that those who are watching right now need to answer for themselves is who is Jesus Christ? Mm -hmm. Is he the Son of God, the Savior of the world, second person of the most holy trinity who died on the cross that he might be a substitute for us because the scripture says the soul that sinneth shall die. The wages of sin is death. And so Jesus took upon himself my sin in order that he might be able to forgive me completely and then to give me something that I never had before, which is his, his righteousness. And he, he became sin for us that we might, uh, through faith in him, become the righteousness of God in him. And so that's the, the best and most important question one, one could answer. Who is Jesus Christ? And that will ultimately determine our eternity. It determines our eternity. And so, Pastor, thank you so much. It's one of, again, one of my favorite teachings that when we do go to Israel, mm -hmm. I hear you say, because now it becomes personalized. It's not who my mom and dad thought it, what, who right. Jesus is. It's not what popular belief is. It comes down to who do I say exactly. that Jesus is. And mm -hmm. so... Thank you so much. And, you know, again, you guys, you have to come to Israel because when you're sitting there in Caesarea Philippi and you're hearing these, but Jesus is saying, you can almost imagine them sitting in those, those little cutout areas yeah. and with the water coming down yeah. and, and uh, you can hear the water flowing down in yeah. Banya's temple. Exactly. Right there. There's that, that water source that they believed was the gates of hell. They called it the gates of hell. So when Jesus says that uh, you are Peter and, Upon this rock I shall build my church, and the gates of hell are not going to be prevailing against it. Well, he's got as his backdrop mm. this pagan site that is called the gates of hell. And uh, so he's, he's drawing a distinction between what truth is and what the mythology of the Greek was. Wow. Well, thank you, Pastor David. And we look forward for you guys to come join us this Sunday at 8.30 a.m. and 10.45 as uh, you're taking us through the book of Mark. Yes. Mm -hmm. It's a very interesting uh, yeah. study. Why do you fear? Mm -hmm. That's going to be a good one. Well, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> it is when you read it. Let's see how I can present it. I, you, I'm not going to spoil it, but you shared a statistic with me yeah. earlier. And yeah. uh, um, eye-opening. It eye can be. And so I want to invite you guys to invite your friends to come on out and join us. And uh, again, we have our Israel trip coming up. Still time to sign up. Would love to have you guys join Pastor David and Marie on this amazing trip. And so, yeah, Pastor, thank you so much. Church family, we'll see you next week. God bless you. We'll see you on Sunday.